Welcome back. It's your boy Blue. I drink beer and I know things. So this is right here. We have a 1970 club car uh, picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. Pretty darn good deal. Um, spent the last couple of weeks uh, refurbishing or desulfonating the uh, battery bank, and it's been holding steady at like 37 volts. Uh, I received a 36 volt 18 amp charger off of Amazon. I'll put links if you want. Um, so I'm now topping it off. It's holding steady about 43.3, give or take. Still hasn't finished the charging cycle, but it looks like I made out like a bandit, uh, not having to spend money replacing all six of those battery carts. Uh, sorry, batteries. Um, so, but I did recently find out uh, with, with that one friend of mine that uh, motor is bad. Uh, also, I'll have to go to the rear diff because when I picked it up from the guy that sold it to me, uh, he said that uh, there was a guy there trying to buy it off of him. But the thing wouldn't roll. The guy got all pissed off, didn't want to buy it anymore. He thought it old. I'm like, man, this thing's almost complete. Why would you complain about a rear diff locked up when it's pretty easy to get that unlocked? Anyway, the guy sold it to me for a little lower, meaning that he had to go through and do whatever he had to do to get it to unlock and to get it to roll. It rolls. Uh, but like I said, with a friend of mine, I find out recently, just yesterday, found out that uh, I have a bad motor. But that the motor does work. Um, I looked up some YouTube videos on how to wire a series DC motor. Uh, there's a certain way you wire it. Um, I do not intend on doing tutorials so much unless asked. Um, just kind of show you what I do for hobbies. Anyway, um, yeah, so the motor actually does work. Um, you'll see that I ordered some new solenoids uh, to replace the old ones. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. Um, then maybe I'll do a full frame off uh, restoration at least. The best that I can do it. I can't afford to send it to someone to, to do a complete uh, restoration. But you know, once I get it done, I don't know. I'll drive around for a bit, you know, see what I can get for it, and get a couple of more cards. I don't know. But anyway, well, all right. So down here below, looking at the rear diff, and there's where the motor used to be, and here it is now. All right, so basically just wrap the leads around one of the seat backs to kind of ease the fall onto these, uh, this old air mattress and then an old horse blanket and it fell neatly on it, rolled right back this way. And like I said, here it is. Maybe I can get it rebuilt for less than replacing, I don't know. Maybe I should just outright replace it and not have to worry about anything. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I haven't had much luck finding these online, but we'll try again. Didn't try for that much, but yeah, all right. All right, so several weeks and lots of facial hair later. Um, I finally figured out the uh, relay array and resistor bank circuit for the uh, golf cart here uh, i'm going to show you real quick um the uh the logic behind the circuit and uh show you how it works all right all right so here's the resistor bank and the solenoid uh, relays now i got these off of amazon probably i don't know 12 to 15 bucks uh maybe i'll Leave a link if I can find it. Um, leave it down below because if you buy the original, the OEM stuff or the uh, actual part, uh, the actual golf cart part, uh, which is these here, uh, man, they are really proud of those. Almost, I've seen them as high as one hundred and fifteen dollars, maybe one fifty. 
75 to 150 dollars and i wasn't about to pay that uh for uh solenoids that just don't look very robust these i can pretty much vouch for because i've seen these in fords i got one in my ford right now very similar except that notice these are 36 volt rated and i think 300 amp rated with i think 600 uh uh, intermittent uh, it's probably in the spec if you if I find that link anyway so the way this works all right is this is your permissive relay which enables the uh, resistor bank circuit right so then you have your low speed and so on and so forth right so you, you got full solenoid so you get one-fourth of the voltage so on and so forth uh, until you get max speed, all 36 volts go into the motor. Okay, so uh, here is my permissive circuit right now. I'm just going to tie in the positive to the rest of the solenoids. But this would be, this would go out to the key, to the forward or reverse switch, um, on and off switch, whatever permissives you have to enable the cart to go. This will be tied to that. And then uh, that's what enables the circuit. Anyway, so right now I just have it tied in. I'm gonna land uh, my positive here. And you should hear the click. There's the click on. So that's the first solenoid is uh, energized, which closes the contact. All right, circuit is enabled. So then as I press down on the accelerator, you're going to do it with my hand. Um, the very first solenoid that will energize is going to be this one, the red, and then white, then blue, and then black. The drawing that I have shows it backwards or the other way, uh, as well as the lead going out to the motor off the resistor bank uh, shows it over here. But that's not, that wasn't correct, or maybe the model that I have just contradicts that I think I have a 70 uh, the drawing that I have found was from a 71 and anyway um, also notice how I had to clip this wire here because it was connected to this and it was on the negative side according to the drawing and that is correct but not this so I don't know how this thing even ran um, you know like I said this is a 70 the drawing to 71 maybe they fixed that I don't know but anyway it was just impossible. There was just no way. I was. Just, it was just going to crowbar the entire circuit. Anyway, I cut this. All right. I have the permissive landed here just temporarily. And all right. So what's going to happen is you'll hear this one click and then this one. So on and so forth. And you'll hear the motor accelerate in speed. All right. So here we go. Spark is spark. Alright. Special effects and everything. Okay. Alright. So prove that it worked. Now I know how to wire it once I reinstall it, which is what I'm going to do right now. And hopefully I can get this thing, I can start driving this thing maybe by the end of the day. All right. Be right back. Well, all right. <clears throat> Here she is. Um, I mounted the uh, solar ones. You can barely see them back there. I had to take the light off from uh, inside the, uh, the roof here. That's where I was had it hanging. But you can barely see the solenoid bank there. Uh, I got some temporary wiring, and I actually have forward and reverse. So I figured that out on, on the forward and reverse switch. I think it's just labeled wrong, or maybe I could just swap around the armature wires and get it going the correct direction. But uh, I'm going to take this for a test drive, just let you guys see that. And then what else? Yeah. Oh, I got to be careful, though. I have no brakes. Uh, I might have to throw it in reverse. I need to stop all of a sudden, but we'll see. I'll just take it easy. And 
white wire there is a permissive switch or wire whatever and I also have that other little yellow wire going to the positive side of the coils on the solenoid and yeah oh check out my uh, super quick super sick um, <clears throat> 2x6, 2x4 seat. Very ergonomic. All right, so let's uh, jump in and let's take off. All right. So we got here, just double check. Got that on. So. It says reverse, but it might go forward, so we'll see. Yep. All right. Here we go. Garage. All right, no brakes. All right, I'm gonna put the phone down. I'm gonna get out of the garage first, then take it from there. So here's my 1971 Ford F100. Um, I have a whole series of videos that I'm putting together, editing, to uh, show the uh, rebuild on the engine, uh, disc brake conversion, rims. Uh, I'm having a bit of fuel delivery issues. We'll talk about that, but I also put, uh, that's because I put a uh, sniper fuel injection kit on it. So. I will post that series soon. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, we'll see uh, the reaction we get off of this truck. But uh, I love the way it looks, love the way it runs. It's just that I can't run it for more than an hour because then I'm stuck by the side of the road. Fuel pump stops delivering fuel. I have to pull over, wait for an hour for it to cool off, then I can hit the road again. But uh, we'll try and figure that out uh, with you guys here soon. All right, and then I recently picked up this Mitsubishi, it's a 92, uh, engine's in the back, so I'm just gonna rebuild the engine, put it back in, maybe get her repainted, and then see if I can flip this car for a decent amount of pocket change. But yeah, we'll see. And then we'll come back over here to the garage, and there's my 71 Delta 88 Oldsmobile Delta 88 it's got a 455 um, I need to pull the intake manifold uh, because the, uh, apparently I I rolled it when I reinstalled when I replaced the other when I replaced the uh, intake manifold gasket I rolled the gasket which I couldn't see which was in the far back 
in the firewall here. And um, so now I, it just pisses oil everywhere, leaks oil everywhere when I run it. And I'm, I, I'm chasing the, uh, the timing. I just can't get it to, to start consistently, smoothly. And then once I get it started, I'm just chasing the idle point everywhere. I just can't get it to, to idle correctly. Um, so I got to crank it up really high. Anyway, um, I'll get to that after I figure out what's going on with my truck. And then get that little truck flipped. And then I got to go back through this thing, pull the carb, clean the carb. And then I'm going to dump all the fuel out because apparently I didn't clean it enough. I also did a PVC coat. I forget the name of the, of the, the product. I'll remember it here soon. But it's basically that PVC cement stuff that uh, I use to line the tank. Apparently I must have not gotten a pocket of, of rust in there. And it just wouldn't run right again. It, run, it ran great for like a day or two. But then um, a couple of days later, I tried to go start it again. And it was behaving exactly like it was before I cleaned it. So apparently I didn't clean it enough. But it's a 92 Kawasaki Concourse. Beautiful bike. Uh, again, once I get it running properly, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I just put it up for sale. But this thing is slick. I mean, shaft drive. Uh, you know, I got Penyar bags. The works on this thing. So, anyway, let's get back.